See? Now, do you really think, do you really think that all those marriages have ended scripturally? Now, some of them, might, some of them may be put away because of death. Some of them, death might have severed some of them. And some of them might have been put away for fornication. But all of them? What are the odds that the marriages that are put asunder today, and by the way, I think about ever 50 or maybe 6 out of 10, end in divorce. Do you think they're all because of this reason? So if someone is put away for reasons other than fornication, here's what Jesus says, Whoso marries her that is put away doth commit adultery. Why? Because she was not put away for the right reason, and she's therefore still bound to her husband. She's still bound to her husband. Now, she's not called an adulteress if, she's, if she puts away her husband and marries another because she's not bound to him. Here's the exception. God says you're not bound. Here's, here's where you can put him away. But if you're put away, you put away, you marry someone else, and you've been put away for something other than fornication, you're still bound to that first wife, that first husband. Still stuck together. Now, why are you mad? Why are you mad at the at the politicians for not defending the Defense of Marriage Act? You ought to be mad at these yahoos that say, "Well, just marry as many times as you want to." You ought to be mad at these guys who say, "Well, God's grace can cover it all." So that's the devil's lie. That's the devil's lie. Look at this. So here's the conclusion. The only way a person can is free to remarry is if they were a widow or widower. Because we know they're no longer bound to their spouse because death has separated them. They're free. Or if they were the innocent party. That is, they put away their spouse because their spouse committed fornication. See? Whoso put away... Right here. Whosoever shall put away his wife for fornication, the, the, the logical reasoning is, whosoever shall put away his wife for fornication and marries another does not commit adultery. But if you put away your wife, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, if you put away your wife for anything other than fornication and marry another, you commit adultery. So, you're free to remarry and not be an adulterer if you put away your spouse for fornication. This is why a serious matter. This is why marriage is a very, very serious obligation and responsibility. Because God puts you together. And God's the only one who gives the reasons for being put away. Now, if you remarry after being put away for any reason... You commit adultery because God still got you bound together. You put your wife away because she didn't cook for you. You put your husband away because he yelled all the time, didn't go to work. Well, you, you married the sorry bum to start with. See, you can't, you can't get away. You can't put away. You can't put away. Jesus said, I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife except it be for fornication and shall marry another committed adultery. Now that's what Jesus said on the matter. It's gut-wrenching. I don't like talking about this situation, these matters, but I have to. Why? Because I'm in the business to do what politicians and Jerry Falwell and Billy Graham and all these other yahoos, what they won't do. I'm in a position to have to defend the act of marriage. I have to tell you the truth. You know why this country's in a big mess? It's because the devil has messed up marriage. He's got people to believe they can marry and divorce as many times they want to, and as long as they're happy, God's happy with them. Why don't you check with what God says about marriage before you decide if God's happy or not? See? That's really what it's getting down to. So bottom line is, let's just do a side-by-side -side comparison. Man says... A man or woman who divorces for 
reasons other than fornication by his or her spouse and repents and says, I'm sorry, and asks God to come into their heart and cleanse them and purify them, can remarry and they won't be in a sin. That's what, that's what man says. God says a man or woman who divorces for reasons other than fornication and marries another commits adultery. Now, that's the act of marriage that we have to defend. That, that's just what God's law of marriage is. Now, don't be mad at me for telling you the truth. And don't be mad at the politicians. You need to be mad at all the preachers who are messing it up. Because God wrote the law on marriage. You know what's the old song, who wrote the book of love? God wrote the book of marriage. I know who wrote the book. God wrote the book. Don't get mad at me. I didn't write it. I'm just telling you what the book says. See? Who's really defending the act of marriage? Who's really the act of marriage? All right, we're going to take some phone calls. <clears throat> You're on Word from the Lord? Okay. Could that be a reason why I get a divorce and 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 uh, invite on? She finds a good Christian husband that treats her kids good and and uh, treats them good and treats her good. But the other man that she divorced might like they have put a restraining order and stuff like that on. Could that be a good? How could that? Could that be a good reason to have a divorce? Can, can you can you see this right here? Yeah. Okay. Can, will you read verse nine for me right here? Oh, yeah, the fornication, but I don't believe a woman should be abused and stuff like that and, and stay in a house where you get beat and beat okay. and beat to death because I have... Uh, but you, you, asked me, you asked me if that was a good reason to get divorced, and I'm saying if you can see this, will you read verse 9 for me? It's about uh, fornication. So, I mean, a okay. woman got, I know she's fornicated, but how about a woman that gives crap beat? She's going to stay in the marriage and get beat to death? No, but you said, is that a reason... To get a divorce. I didn't say you couldn't get away. That's why you call the police. That's why you call the police. But you're still bound. You're still bound to that man. That's what I'm saying. A lot of people complain about getting married to, to no good husband or no good wives. But yeah, didn't nobody put a gun to your head to make you marry him, did they? They go in the in rust they, have, they, they don't go in with God's will. I'm saying, yeah, the exception, the exception to for divorce is fornication. And I know there's a lot of I know there's a lot of sorry dogs out there who have beaten their wives. Yeah, and that's why they all That's do. right. But you know what? God didn't say you can put away for being beat. You can get away, you can leave him, call the police on him, put him in jail. But you know what I found out? I found a lot of people, a lot of wives, they'll get beat, but they won't put the man in jail. Yeah, I see that a lot on here around T V. Why don't you put him in jail? He's a sorry dog. Yeah. God, God has ordained. Look at this. <clears throat> Romans chapter 13. Look what God says. God says the powers that be are ordained of God. Now, whosoever resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is a minister of God. He is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do evil, be afraid. You know what? These, these people that, that are beating their wives and beating their kids and whatever, they're not afraid. They ought to be. See? Yeah, I believe in the reason why you see divorce sometimes is they don't put God first in life. They pray to God, put God first in the family, put everything God first in their life. Read the Bible, go to church. I believe there won't be that much divorce and say if they put God first. Well, definitely if they'd follow God's plan. Yeah. But let's get back to the question. Let, let's let's make sure that we answered your question. Okay. You said, is is your husband beating you a good reason for divorce or good enough reason for divorce? And what does the Bible say? Uh, see, do like my TV getting blurry calls. Because I live in Summerfield, North Carolina, so it's okay. distorted. 
Well, the Bible says, except it be for fornication. Okay, now he's clear. Now I had to move my antenna a little okay. bit. I see now about fornication, except by fornication. So, so, so being beat is not a reason for being put away, for putting your husband away. Okay, I, I understand. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, there's just one, uh, one more question, because I read this on the Internet, is that if a preacher does not marry a, a gay couple, a gay couple, Okay. They could take the minister as a license away from the government. Can could they do that? Well, I guess I guess the government could, but you know what? I I don't uh, I don't get my marching orders from man first and foremost. I get my marching orders from God. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I wouldn't I think perform, that's I right. Government come in and take wake up. You don't believe in that? The government should not have the right to come in and try and take a preacher's life of the way. Right. Right. Because uh, my grandfather uh, raised me, I mean, not raised me, but he said, I always, God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, or uh, Eve or Ava. He made Adam and, uh, Adam and Eve. Right. Right. Well, well, thanks for answering my question. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks for your call. Now, I, I know what the man asked. You know, that may seem harsh, but friends, look. You, you can't get a divorce and have a right to remarry just because your husband or your wife's being mean to you. You need to call the law on them. You'll still be bound to them. You'll still be bound to them. You'll still be married. But you can certainly get out of the abusive situation. See? You, you don't have to stay and be beaten for the sake of because you're married. But you can't put them away. You can't say, I'm going to put you away, get a divorce, I'm going to marry somebody better. You should have married somebody better to start with. See, you shouldn't take marriage so lightly. All right? All right. That was not a call. All right. So, you know, I, I know that sounds harsh, but we, we've, got to, we've got to defend the act of marriage here. Now, let's move on. Now, uh, can't drop the number just for a second, if you would. Let, let's, put it, let's put a picture here so we can see. Can we drop our numbers? Can we put our numbers down? All right. Now here we're going to try to do a visual illustration here. Matthew 19, 9. I say unto you, whosoever. That's right here. These two guys. These two people are whosoever's. They're Joe whosoever and Sue whosoever. All right. Whosoever. Shall put away his wife. That's her. He's putting her away. He's putting her away. Except it be for fornication. But he's putting her away. Whosoever put away his wife and shall marry another commits adultery. If he gets married to somebody else, he's committing adultery. If he didn't put her away for fornication, he's, he's going to commit adultery. And, and whosoever marrieth her, that's this guy, whosoever marrieth her, right? Whosoever marrieth her, which is put away commits adultery. Now he's committing adultery because he's married someone who's really bound to this guy. He's bound to someone else. See, this is really pretty clear. The only reason you have for severing the bond that God has put together is for fornication. Now, we can try to justify it. We can try to rationalize it. Well, 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 well. But you know what? I'm not going to I'm not going to not defend the act of marriage. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. Now, it may be hard, it may be cold. Jesus' disciples, when he got through teaching about marriage, he said, Well, it's good that a man should not marry. No, he didn't say that. You know, it's a hard saying, yeah. But you may have to receive it. Look at this. Someone says, Well, I can't. I can't live, I can't live without my, without my wife. I've been married for, her, you know, so many years, and I, I, just can't, I just can't put her away even though we don't have a right to be married. She put away her husband because he was a drunk, and I put away my wife because, you know, she was a bad cook, and we've been married for 30 years. Well, here's the exception right here. Now, 
Here's what you may have to do. Look what Jesus says <clears throat> in verse 11. Matthew 19, 11, He said, All men cannot receive this saying save they to whom it is given. All right? He, in verse 12, For there are some eunuchs which are born so from their mother's womb. Now, if you don't know what a eunuch is, we just... It's a, it's a male that can't reproduce. Some are eunuchs which are born from their mother's womb. There are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And he said, and there be some eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Now here he's talking about physically they're eunuchs. Physically they're eunuchs. Now he says spiritually they're eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. They're celibate. For the sake of the kingdom. In other words, in order to do what God says, they're going to live without a physical mate so that they don't commit fornication or they're not guilty of adultery. Because adulterers and fornicators won't enter heaven. And it's worth it. It's worth it if you have to be celibate in order to get to heaven. Become unity for the kingdom's sake. There's, there's a lot of people that say, you know what? I'd like to be married again, but I can't be married again. I'm stuck. I made some bad mistakes. I made some bad mistakes. I put away my spouse. I put away my spouse for some reason other than fornication. And now I can't be married to anybody else. Okay. Become a unit for the kingdom's sake. See? Why not, why not realize the greater good here? Now, friends, don't be mad at me. See, the Defense of Marriage Act, the reason why marriage is in such bad shape in this country, it's not because of the politicians violating man's laws. It's because, it's because the churches aren't teaching the truth. I want you to read this. I'm going to read this with you. <clears throat> this is a final decision by the Presbyterian Church, the USA Presbyterian Church, and how they determine they are going to deal with civil unions and, and marriages in general. Now, this is what they write. This is part of it. It says, Just as the same-sex unions, some view public rituals of blessings for same-sex couples without a change of status as socially indeterminate. Others find it to be helpful compromise. In other words, they're saying some people are, they're mixed. Should we allow same-sex marriages? Well, listen. God made the rules on marriage. Let's defend the act of marriage. God did not put a man and a man together. He created Adam and Eve. And that was his intention, one man and one woman. He says, finally others believe that a blessing of the same gender relationships may implicitly, if not explicitly, condone and or encourage behaviors. In other words, they're saying, some people are saying we ought to, we ought to bless the same-sex marriages. Other people are saying don't because all it will do is it will cause it to be more pre prevalent. Now, this is what I want you to notice. I want you to listen to what the Presbyterian Church has concluded about uh, uh, the, the traditions of marriage. It says, several Christian denominations and traditions are confronting the issues raised by the same gender marriage. In other words, other churches are dealing with this. The three bodies with whom the Presbyterian Church, USA, is in full communion. Three bodies with whom the Presbyterian Church is in full communion have taken differing positions to date. Now, just think about that for a minute. The Presbyterian Church has fellowship with three different groups of people who have three different views on same-sex marriages. Who is defending the act of marriage? Let me tell you who's not. 
It's not the Presbyterian church. See? Well, we're in full fellowship with these people, and they got three different views. Let me tell you, if you have a view that's different on marriage and divorce than what the Bible says, we're not in fellowship. As a matter of fact, there's a, there's a little group right down here on, where, where am I looking here? Right down here on Settle Street. And you know what? They'll teach the same thing that Mr. Olin Hicks teaches. They call themselves the Church of Christ. I've talked with them. I've talked with the preacher. And they'll tell you, yeah, just 70 times 7, as many times as you want to. You married, divorced, married, divorced. You ask for forgiveness, you just go on. God's grace will cover it. Sorry. We, we are not in fellowship. Now, the Presbyterian Church, they don't have a problem with, with uh, doing this. Here they say, the United Church of Christ. Now, that's not, that's not us. We're not the, the United Church of Christ denomination. We are united, but we are not the United Church of Christ. Recognizes same-sex marriages. Here's what the, the UCC says. We affirm that all humans are made in the image and likeness of God, including people of all sexual orientations. And God has bestowed upon each one the gift of human sexuality. Further, we recognize and affirm that as created in God's image and gifted by God with human sexuality, all people have the right to lead lives that express love, justice, and mutuality. In other words, the United Church of Christ says, hey, same-sex marriage is A-OK. Not what God's marriage says. We're defending the act of marriage here. Here, God's laws on marriage say nothing about two men or two women getting married. God made the rules. He ordained marriage. He gets to make the rules. And he said one woman and one man. Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and, and female? Now notice this. Here's somebody else. The Presbyterian church says, okay, the United Church of Christ, they're fine. They have same-sex marriages. The Reformed Church in America restricts marriage to the union of one man and one woman to the exclusion of all others. Now, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. But let me ask you this. Will the Reformed Church in America, will they exclude certain men and certain women from being married? God does. See? God says if you have been put away, if you committed fornication and you were put away by your spouse, you don't get to marry somebody else. God says if you were divorced for some reason other than fornication, you don't get to marry because you're still bound. Now, God is a little more exclusive than a little more exclusive than the Reformed Church of America. The Presbyterians, they, they can go either way. Now, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America Someone else the Presbyterian Church is connected with. They affirm that marriage is a covenant of mutual promises, commitment, hope authorized legally by the state and blessed of God. The historic Christian tradition and the Lutheran confession have recognized marriage as a covenant between a man and woman. Currently, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America lacks consensus on the matter of Lifelong monogamous same gender relations. They hadn't decided what they're going to do. Now you see what we're doing. Look who. Look where the Presbyterian Church is. The Presbyterian Church says, "Well, we are in fellowship with the United Church of Christ that says same sex is okay. We're in fellowship with the RCA Church that says one man and one woman." And we're in fellowship with the Evangelical Lutheran Church that says, we ain't decided yet. Who's defending the act of marriage? It's not the Presbyterian Church. It's not Billy Graham. It wasn't Jerry Falwell. I should not expect it to be the president or the attorney general. I expect it to be the people who are professing to teach God's word. That's who ought to be in defense of marriage. That's who ought to be in defense of marriage. So don't get mad. Listen, don't get mad when, uh, when, when people say, well, you know, uh, we, we got the homosexuals coming in for marriage. Well, you got the, <clears throat> you've got the United Church of Christ and the Lutherans 
They're saying, okay. Our Episcopalians, they're saying, okay. You got the Presbyterians going, well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go whichever way you want to go. We'll just check the wind, see what's more popular. See? You got Billy Graham that's saying, oh, God loves you. Just do what you want to do. Ain't nobody defending the act of marriage. But the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ, your friends that bring you what does the Bible say in the word of the Lord? We'll defend the act of marriage. We'll defend what God says on it. Why? Because we're set for the defense of the whole gospel, including the act of marriage. Now, it may not always be fun. It may not always be easy. But I can assure you this, friends. We'll defend what the Bible says in order to help you, in order to help you know what the will of God is. Now, everybody's up in arms because the politicians won't defend it. But you want to know who's really defending the act of marriage? It's your friends in the Church of Christ. And if we can assist you in studying the Bible, I think we're, we're out of time, aren't we? Yeah, I started late tonight. So, friends, if you, if you want to know the truth, maybe you're, maybe you're in a marriage. You don't know whether you have a scriptural marriage or not. Maybe you don't know if God is is uh, in a relationship with you. You want to study the Bible? We'll study with you. We're going to put our content information up so that you can uh, so that you can know that. Know how to reach in touch with us. 276-340-2653 336-394-5721 we'll, we'll be glad to get in touch with you. Study the Bible with you. If you're in the Martinsville, Danville area, here's how you can uh, here's how you can reach the brethren there, 823 Starling Avenue, 120 American Legion. Till next time, friends, thank you for watching. We hope that you have gained some insight on what God's laws for marriage really is and realize that we will defend the act of marriage as well as the entire gospel. Remember to ask, what does the Bible say? You'll always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. Guys are just confused. Watch Johnny Robertson and Religious Review Wednesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. on WGSR 47.1, Comcast Cable 17, Time Warner Cable Channel 5, Chatmoss Cable 14. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word, come examine the Church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 the Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord Thursday nights at 9 o'clock right here on WGSR.